Hello. Uh, I know most of you, I think, because I've either taught you before or I'm teaching you now, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm here to present uh, Carolina Sanchez Crespo, who you may have met, or perhaps not, but she's uh, uh, a lecturer in procedural law here at the University of Valencia, and she's accredited as a professor. Professor, as I'm sure you know, is the highest academic rank in, in the university. Um, she has a lot of experience. I'm not going to read everything that she's, uh, that she's done. She has taught in some universities you may well have heard of, uh, University College Dublin uh, in Ireland, uh, the National University of Buenos Aires in Argentina, uh, the uh, University in Havana, uh, the Universidad of... <coughs> University, sorry, of Turku in, in Finland, Fordham uh, University in the United States, in New York. And she's really an expert on uh, evidence, uh, especially in criminal proceedings, and especially a particular type of evidence, uh, IT evidence. She's written extensively on, for example, the investigation of electronic fraud, of IT evidence used in criminal and civil processes. She's uh, written also on audiovisual evidence. Uh, she's been involved in lots of research projects, but I'll talk about two very briefly. One, electronic fraud and bank communications in the European Union. And also, actually, at the moment, I believe she's researching on big data uh, and cloud computing and the new challenges which are posed by emerging technologies. So, uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Carolina Sanchez Crispo. Uh, something, I don't know how many of you, because talking to the students, not to the, the professionals, but talking to the students, how many of you have done procedural law? Any of you? Have you done procedural law? Yes or no would be the right response to this. Uh, in, well, some of you might have done civil procedural law and not criminal procedural law. When I did it, it was in the last course. So that was a five-year course. It was in the last year. So, I mean, a, a simple thing that you may well be aware of, even if you've not studied it, but just from watching TV, and an idea which is central to appreciating uh, the presentation is that Evidence which is gathered uh, for criminal trials, which infringes a fundamental right, can't be used as evidence in court. Yeah? So if a fundamental right is infringed, uh, is, is collected illegally, and that infringes a fundamental right protected by the Constitution, that evidence then can't be presented in court. Uh, in Spanish, they talk about the doctrine of the poison tree, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, uh, right, okay. So that's, that's a very simple idea, but uh, uh, something you need to keep in mind when you're watching the presentation. I won't speak anymore. Uh, I'll turn the floor, as it were, over to Dr. Carolina sanchez Crespo. Okay, thank you very much. So good morning, everybody. Thank you, Andrew, for your kind introduction. So it's my pleasure being here today. Let me, first of all, say that I'm very grateful to the organization of this English Legal Workshop for the opportunity provided, especially to Professor Elena Gorrit here present. Thank you, Elena. So it has made possible to address you today speaking about a topic that for me is particularly appealing. The topic is related to criminal investigation and specifically to technological investigation. So the title that I have uh, chosen for my oral presentation you can see on the screen is CIS in the Spanish Criminal Procedure Act facing the fourth industrial revolution. And the summary. Oh. Moment, please. It's okay. And the summary that I want to propose to you, it has three main points. The first point is to begin with, and with this, with this point, what I pretend um, is to. Um, so I have the goal of framing the topic. Okay, then will come technological investigation with the study of the order for the retention of the data and then uh, the investigative acts. And finally, a case law regarding one of these investigative acts. 
or the tenants of the pillow. So to begin with, so let's imagine a movie. Let's imagine a movie in which, uh, well, it's not a fiction of your imagination because it's not completely a fiction. It's a movie that is taking place at the moment. Which is the movie? The movie is the, uh, well, every movie has to, it's, it's very important that this movie has at least three elements. First, a good story, then actors starring, and then uh, a stage. So in this movie that I want you to imagine, this movie has a story. This story, the plot, is uh, <coughs> the fourth industrial revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution, of course, came after the first, the second, and the third. So in the first industrial revolution, we have through the introduction of mechanical production of facility, and with the help of water and steam power, we have the first mechanical loom at the end of 17th century. This was the first. After the second, you can uh, realize that uh, every revolution has uh, a degree of complicity, which is uh, increasing every time. So in the second industrial revolution, through the introduction of a division of labor and mass production, we have, and with the help of electrical energy, we have another step in this uh, revolution of the mass uh, of production. Then with the third revolution, industrial revolution, through the use of electronic and IT system that further automate production, we have this revolution at the moment, but at the moment, uh, for the time being, we have the fourth industrial revolution through the use of cyber physical system, which is the main feature of this feature of this uh, fourth industrial revolution. Well, it's the use that we are giving to the internet. So the internet uh, has been a mass media, a very good mass media, but by the time being, internet. Is internet is the, the, the way in which we can understand the world. So everything that we have in a physical way, everything can have a reflect, a reflection, I mean, in the, on the internet. So it's very easy if we think, for example, about uh, one thing uh, as simple as a document. If I have here a document with a written test and I have machine tool on it, for example, here, um, we can think that there is a, a legal document, and I can give this document like this to Andrew. Andrew can have this information, and that's all. Only it's the document that I know, a private document I give to Andrew. That's all. But what about if I uh, scan this document? This document can, can go to a great amount, amount of people, and the consequences could be uh, really uh, important. So with this full revolution, with the power of the internet, we have what is, is called the Internet of the Things. So here is a, a Q review. The first revolution is in power, the second electrical power, the third computing power, and after Internet of Things. But notice that it's Internet of Things that could be hacked. So it's very important, it's very nice, but things could be hacked. hacked. When we are uh, putting everything on the Internet, we are uh, increasing the level of our dependence on the technology, so it's increasing our vulnerability. This is important. So in the Internet of Things, you have anything, any device, any person, any path, any network connected. So it's really nice in order to our working time, in order to have new possibilities, but at the same time, as I have told you before, we are increasing our dependence on the technology. So this is the story. And what about the actors? So, in the beginning of the 20th century, Mark Prensky wrote a book uh, called uh, On the Horizon. And then, in this book, uh, he classified all the people over the world in two big groups. Digital natives and digital immigrants. And I'm pretty sure that you can see where you are. So here I can see some digital natives over there and some digital immigrants, for example. <laughs> here I'm a good example of a digital immigrant. So what's the use of this? What this is important, these actors? Because in this, uh, in, uh, at the moment, we know that the digital immigrants are well positioned, well positioned in the society. So these people is the people who is making uh, by the team being the rules, the laws. So, 
The main difference between the digital immigrants and the, native, uh, uh, the digital natives is that digital natives speak digital language as bilingual. They are bilingual. They can speak this language uh, without any problem. But digital immigrants can speak the language, but not in the same way. Not in the same way. So the way in which uh, digital natives understand the world has to be a lot with, uh, with uh, the fact that they had been surrounded by the technology from the very beginning, from they were born. So digital immigrants born between uh, 1940 and 1980, well, it's another, another thing. So here we can have not a good picture, but a picture of digital immigrants. You can be nat native, but not so young, or you can be immigrant, but not so old. But this is a good picture of what uh, could be. This is the difference. And then came the stage. Which is the stage? Well, the stage is the world. All the world is the stage of this movie. But what is important for us is that a part of this stage is the criminal proceedings. So the criminal proceedings has to be updated. Have to be updated because if the criminal proceeding is not updated, it would be a useless tool in order to fight against the cyber criminality. So if we want to have some kind of justice, we need to have a criminal proceedings updated. And at the moment, in Spain, we have an a, a important a, a reform on criminal proceedings. Uh, it's in force only 10 months. And has, uh, well, with this uh, reform, we have all the in, uh, technological investigation uh, reformed. So it is possible to have technological investigation, but with warranties, because it's very important to keep the warranties, to keep the warranties, because if not, well, we can investigate, but after, as uh, uh, Professor Andrew has told you, uh, in, a, in a trial, this is nothing, this is nothing, because we have rules, and you have to investigate according to the rules. So here comes the technological investigation. And first, we are going to speak about protective measures in relation to court proceedings, first the order for the retention of data. So with a, a IT evidence, what is more important is to have the data, because the data can be, a, or in fact, they are quite volatile. So what can you do with this data? You need, when you know that a crime, one of these type of crime has been committed, what you need is to freeze this data, to have this data frozen. So with this order for the retention of the data, you can uh, reach this goal. So you know that when in our society there is a big amount of data. Uh, we speak about the big data society. So uh, uh, this is a completely new regulation because allows, here yeah, you, can, you can see, we are going to speak about what does it mean, maximum legal period and duty of cooperation. So, this order uh, allows public prosecutor or judicial police may require any natural person or legal entity, so anybody, for data preservation included in a computer storage system at the disposal until they get a judicial authorization. So uh, does not mean that uh, the police, the, the police or the public prosecutor are able to uh, uh, to make a treatment of this data but they can act in order to freeze in the data. After you get the judicial authorization, and with the judicial authorization, you are able to treat the data, but not before. But it's very important to have the possibility of this. And um, moreover, because uh, we are in the Convention on Cybercrime, and it's very important that when uh, uh, one of our uh, partner acts for this data, we have this data, and it's very important that this partner uh, can give us this data. Maximum legal period uh, 90 days extendable and renewable only once until the transfer of the data or until the deadline. So 180 days as maximum. Okay, but it's uh, enough. The duty of cooperation. This is quite important because in all these uh, orders and in all these investigative acts, the duty of cooperation that um, the, the, the law allows is really, really high and implies the collaboration, the cooperation 
of many people in the society. So think that, for example, when you need uh, to, to enter, for example, physically in a home, so it's not very important what the tool that you, the, you require, but when you have to enter, in a, in a, you have to, to, to freeze some data, you need perhaps to ask um, help to the society. So uh, the people that are obliged, uh, all these people that is a legal entity, any person, anybody, if they don't, uh, uh, if they don't agree, because they are obliged to observe secrecy and they have to fulfill this duty, they will commit the crime of disobedience. It was, uh, suppose, a prison sentence from one to four years and fine from three to six months. Investigative acts. What? Well, in the investigative acts, uh, first, I want to have a quick look here. Let's have a look. Because these are, these are the five investigative measures, new measures, that we have in our lab. We are going to speak a little bit on the third and on the five. On the third, through the case law, and the five, looking into the legal regulation. So the first is the interception of telephonic and electronic communication. Well, it seems a joke, but here in Spain we had our uh, telephonic communication was regulated only from the last century in the last, so in the 80s and in the 80 decade. So it was funny because, uh, well, funny in, in a sense, funny, and, and the regulation was really poor. So it was uh, plenty of lags and um, lob holes. So, uh, at the moment, by the time being, we have the interception of telephonic and electronic communication well done. So, it's, very, it's quite well done in the, in the new regulation. So, at least we have this. And uh, the capture and recording of all communication through the use of electronic devices. Well, that means uh, in, the, in, the in the, the, the first of these uh, electronic communications, we have a non-presential communication. Now, we have a presential communication. I'm sure you have uh, seen this on movies, no? Well, the people is with, uh, with the, the electronic devices and yeah. is trying to keep some uh, important information, okay? That's, that's the, the measure, okay? The use of tracking devices, the locating and capture of images. So here we have the global, global position system, the GPS, very common. Uh, there are another system, but this is the more common. And uh, with, this, uh, with the use of tracking devices, locating and capture of images, what you get? Well, you are uh, able of knowing in, uh, where exactly a person is. Well, exactly or more or less. Yeah, more or less where the person is. You can uh, locate the person. And you can, at the same time, capture images of the person, what the person is doing. So this is quite important because uh, before the way in which this was done was by <clears throat> policemen that were making following all the time. Sometimes one of these policemen were, for example, a little bit not uh, making a good their job and uh, the people, the suspected, the suspected people was perhaps uh, uh, lost. So now, with the, with the help of the technology, we can do this very, very, very well, and uh, this is important, of course. And even the invasion, the invasion in the right to privacy of the people is better because you have the possibility of uh, regulate this invasion, the level of the invasion. Then the searching of mass storage devices. I'm sure you know about Mm, I say in Spanish, Diana Cuer. Diana Cuer, you know, the, the case of Diana Cuer. Okay, so you know that the, the police have recovered the mobile phone of the, of the girl? The mobile phone of the girl was in the water. Do you remember? So, uh, how all this information on the mobile phone of Diana Cuer can get with warranties? Well, there is a proceeding, and all this proceeding you can see on the, on the new law, all the proceedings. It's quite important because if the document, the document or the, the file 
is like this in a paper. It's quite easy to read, to have the information, to get information. But if the information is in one of these uh, mass storage devices, which are hundreds of them, well, it's difficult sometimes to get the information with warranties. <coughs> And now comes the remote searching of computer equipment. This is quite interesting because this is something that cyber criminals are, are doing all the time with our computers, or can do at, at least, and they do. In fact, they do. So the remote searching of computer equipment uh, allows the police, the police that they can search in our computers always with judicial authorization. So the, the crimes has to be serious, and all has to be and is, in fact, regulated in the law. So here we have a uh, long highlight for this regulation. What does it mean exactly? Material scope, the crimes, duty of cooperation, and maximum legal period. But before, I would like you to see just a little video of one minute or more or less, in which we, we can see how this uh, act, uh, investigative act works. Yeah, we have what does this mean? This is from the law, it means searching a computer without the user or holder's knowledge. It may be the content of a computer, an electronic device, an IT system, a mass data storage, so on. It can only be done for a specific list of crimes. This is the, the scope, the material scope. And here we have the video. So here in this video, we can be, this is the target. The man being investigated. So the man being investigated is having a conversation with his partner. But the headquarters has full access to the target system. So it's, you know, through the webcam, is reaching the image and the info that is, yes. <laughs> because it's really close, so they very big, the hand. <laughs> okay. It's only a criminal, but it's not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so they are speaking, I don't know, you can read, uh, speaking about a package, speaking about a, a, a number, and uh, the partner is asking for a, a document. So the target is going to, to send the documents. So at the same time that the target, the suspected man being investigated, is sending the documents, the headquarters, the police, has full access to these documents. Are encrypted, but then they could uh, read easily with the uh, software. Okay. So which is the material scope? Well, here you have the material scope. Crime committed within a criminal network, terrorist offenses, offenses committed against children and people without full mental capacity, crimes against the Constitution, high treason and related to national defense, and crimes committed using IT equipment or any other information technology. So, let me ask you a question. So, if you have a look on this list, well, it's very difficult to read. that the crimes have to be serious. Mm. All the crimes there are serious? Mm. So, no, the last no, one, no. the last one, no. But you are professor, so professor, and you have me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So the last one is not serious. Crimes committed using IT equipment or any other information technology, <laughs> not so serious. Why is here on this list? Is here because our jurisprudence has stated a concept, different concept of serious crime. Regarding with these IT evidences, 
Why? Because if you, uh, the crime, when you have a crime committed using IT equipment or any other information technology, if you don't use this kind of investigative facts, you are granting impunity. So that's the problem, because this kind of crimes could be, perhaps the penalty is not very, very high. But if you don't use the technology, or this uh, kind of technology, it's impossible, it's impossible so, uh, to investigate in a good way. That's why the material score includes the last, the last point. So, duty of cooperation. I have told you before that the duty of cooperation uh, involves a great amount of people. Can I yes. okay, put that the question? Okay. This uh, possibility to use uh, this kind of investigation is only possible when you uh, do a remote searching of computer equipment, only for that. Not for the rest of the, for example, to control telephonic or electronic communication. It's one of, of the means of, of control a yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, thought for different crimes. Yes. Crimes of terrorism in, mm -hmm. in some cases, in other cases, a kind of, uh, of terrorism plus crimes doing. This last one is only permitted for this type of uh, no, searching, no, no, no. searching or you have seen, I think in in all the types. I think in all. I think I, yes. I, I thought it was only for those one, for the remote researching of computer, no, no. not for. I remember, for uh, example, that you can find in another one sure, for sure. And I think it, 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 I'm not uh, at the moment. I'm not sure at all. But I think in all. In all the new investigative uh, acts, yes. yeah, and it's, it's logical because um, these acts. So uh, sometimes the crimes that being committed using this technology, if you you can use the technology in order to investigate them, it is impossible to to to, to do a good investigation. So it's logical, and this so the, the law uh, is uh, the reflect of our jurisprudence. Supreme Court has told us this for years. Mm -hmm. Before, because we have the, the reform now, but we have been uh, fighting against this criminality without a proper uh, law. Okay. Okay. Well, what does it mean exactly the duty of cooperation? It consists in collaborating with investigation of the judicial police and providing the necessary assistance to enable effective data collection. That's clear. But the point is that uh, the people that are blind are persons specified in Article 588, all services are the all services provider, any person without or responsible for an IT system or data database subject to the remote sets, anyone who knows how the IT system works, plus every person who could in any other way help to provide communication via phone or any other media or communication system. Anybody, any way, because sometimes they need the collaboration of lots of people who are involved and who can give the key in order to access one of these IT systems. Consequences of the breach of the duty, the same as before commission of the crime of disobedience. Okay. Maximum legal period here, one month, sustainable and renewable for specific one month period to a maximum period of three months. This is the shortest period of all the list of investigative facts. The shortest. Logical. Because the invasion is the hardest. The hardest. So, yeah, I mean, there was a question. Should it be counted from the date of judicial authorization? Because the law is not clear at that point. I think so. And I think it's, it's, it has to be like this because in other investigative acts, law speaks clearly and says this. Okay? Hey, law. This came from the Supreme Court from last April. Okay? As is on the use of capture of image of image devices. So the facts, the main facts were this. Police officer conducted surveillance discovered the suspects handling drugs at home. This was possible by watching uh, by watching them by with binoculars. With binoculars. Okay. And uh, they do this to the window of the opposite building because the house being investigated had the curtains open. 
important. This, this is important. The curtain uh, were open, okay? The suspects were arrested when they left home, so the, the police officers were uh, waiting, and then, uh, so the, the suspected people possessed a drug with a street value of 50,000 euros. Well, uh, this came to the, the provincial court of Orense, and then the suspected, uh, after the queues, were convicted. Okay? The crime was uh, trafficking for drugs. Uh, they have a judicial order to. to uh, wait, <laughs> wait, because this is the point. Okay? <laughs> so, what is the point of law? The point of law, because there were. There was a cassation. After was a cassation. The point of law of the cassation was exactly this. So, our. Um, Article 18.2 of uh, Spanish Constitution runs like that. The home is unviable, no insurance may be made with the consent of the dealer or judicial authorization, except in the case of a flower crime, which was not this case. Okay, so, Supreme Court Supreme say um, as follows. Distinguishes two kinds of unconstitutional home invasions, the traditional one and the modern one. The traditional ones are the classical uh, uh, infringement or invasions in which you need uh, to present, physically be present. But with the modern ones, what you have is the clandestine viewing of the inside of a home through the use of capture of image devices. Recording or approaching with the binoculars, which are analogics, are not, uh, are not uh, IT, you have an approaching of the images. With a um, device, electronic device, you can have the approaching, the recording, you can keep the, the images, of course, and this kind of things. So, Supreme Court Supreme says that our article at the moment, so with the existing regulation, says that the use in an investigation of capture of image devices both inside the home or in public spaces needs judicial authorization. But what about binoculars? Because about binoculars, the uh, previous uh, legislation says anything, and the existing one says anything. So the court says, also the court doesn't regulate specifically the use of binoculars, the interference in the right of the availability of the home could be similar to the use of electronic capture of image devices. That's what the Supreme Court says. Then, sets, Supreme Court sets a functional interpretation of our Article 18.2. And why? To protect this citizens against virtual infringements fostered by the technological technological revolution. And then the entry has no judicial authorization. Consequently, <coughs> Supreme Court ruling says that the claims as illicit the main incriminating evidence consisting of the police surveillance with binoculars within the home and then allows the cassation, reverses the judgment of the Provincial Court of Forense acquitting the accused as a result of the police impeachment of the right to the unviolability of the home. But now, after this, I think we have made some final reflections. Criminal conviction can be obtained with no ifs or buts. Investigation has, has its limits. Of course, our Article 11, or our law on judiciary power, states this clearly. But, well, but not at the moment. Not bad. Okay. The home lies indoors, not outdoors. But what about if you are indoors, but you are acting as if you are outdoors? You are acting, making something that it may consider uh, of your privacy, but you have the curtains open. Perhaps this is more a problem of determining the extent to which the right to 
the unviolability of the home can be explicitly or positively pronounced by its holder rather than a problem of the infringement of the right. I mean, it's a problem of infringement of the right, but I think that first is the point, the, the first point is the extent that you give to your right, because you have a, a level, a high level, for protecting this right. Of course you have, but you can renounce. If you renounce, and after the police uh, do like this, and uh, watching with you know, the last but because the curtains were open, I think we can uh, look. And after, we can go beyond. What about if the police officers had discovered a murder instead of a drug trafficking crime? What about? Do you remember that the, the rear window? Starling, James Stewart, and Liz Kelly is a classical one. Do you remember? It's quite good. And then a photographer that is in June has uh, broken his leg, watch with binoculars and with photographer, and with, because he's a photographer. Uh, in the opposite building, he thought that a man, a neighbor, has murdered his wife. And in fact, at the end, you see, uh, I will get the spoiler. <laughs> so uh, you see that, in fact, uh, the, the wife uh, has been murdered by the neighbor. And if this case would happen in Spain, what would be the solution? Well, quite clear. The provincial court probably had uh, convicted the suspect, but then the Supreme Court would have finished with an acquittal. This is the, the reflection. For me, the question is not. Uh, uh, I, I think the best is to think that we are in a case of fragante delito, and in mm -hmm. fragante delito, a policeman or anyone mm -hmm. needs this uh, judicial warrant. So uh, that's a case where someone uh, in that moment committing a, a, a crime. But this was not the case. Of the, in, the, in the film, this is not the case. No, no, not in the film. I'm talking in the in the case you mentioned. Yes, it's not flagrant. Because yes, because they were yes, using this a, kind of crimes are not flagrantly committed. What is it? Of him says. Yeah, but but it in that flagrant, moment, it's que flagrant, uh, flagrant, when you are speaking about flagrant crime, you need that the, the crime has to be. Uh, very, very, you can see. Yeah, yeah it's like, 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 like a murder, like yeah. a murder, for example. For example. For yes. example. But in the other case, they were trafficking with drugs, and, and what that's what, what the police saw with the binoculars, no? They were in a yes. selling drugs, or mm -hmm. a, that's flagrant. Mm -hmm. no. It's not flagrant. But, so the difference between the crime, mm -hmm. uh, the, the mm -hmm. murder, and this one is, if one is flagrant, and we don't need this. Uh, it's not flagrant. flagrant. So the point is that the first, the first crime is not Flagrant. Yeah, but because this kind of crime is not, it cannot be done in a flagrant way. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but you, mm -hmm. you, you ask, what's the difference if, if the mm -hmm. case was, was uh, uh, yes, murder? Yes, it's not the same to, so to see the crime. Case. It's not the same to see the crime. So. Yes, but, but it's the same the way in which you are uh, 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 getting the information about the crime. It's the same, and in both cases, it's illegal. Illegal. The way is illegal. So if it's a murder, is, it's, not, it's not illegal. You, you don't need to warrant. Mm. You, of, yes. course, of course you need. If, if the Article 11 of our uh, uh, law says if you are any, any, if you are, any. But if you are murdering someone, that, 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 and, that, that and thing. Yeah, if you are murdering, it doesn't matter if someone is uh, breaching your unviolability of home or because you don't need in this case, no. it's not a breach. I'm of afraid a... I'm not agree with you. Yeah, I don't agree with what, you. Uh, no, no. Can I, can I ask a question just for clarification? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> what's, sorry, but but. So um, that, I, no, I what's, think... no, 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 no. I'm following what you're saying, and, and I was thinking the same thing, and I was wondering what, therefore, the legal definition of flagrant is. If, yeah, if the, not too yeah. Long, no, the problem is what, when a crime is being committed in that moment. Right. So, so but, that, but in, even way, the possession. Way, even yeah. the possession of large amounts of, for example, cocaine, yeah, so is, is a crime. So, if police have reason to suspect that you've got, you know, five tons of cocaine in your house, how is that not flagrant? I'm not saying it is. I'm saying why is it not? Yeah, 
I thought that was fragrant. I, I thought if you no, say it's not fragrant, okay, but because in, in, a crime for, in a murder for me, it's not It has to be evident. Okay. Has to be evident. Yeah, yeah, it's evident, but, but if the police is watching that someone is, is killing mm. others, it's evident, it's fragrant. No, so but evident, I don't, evident, but without binoculars. So evident. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, for example, I think people, the, the, the sense of problem delicto is just to to not to need. It, it, it's it's uh, it's obvious. You don't need a judicial warrant to enter into a house if you are listening and that someone is murdering another or by heart you are you can, watching. You can listen to someone trafficking drugs. You can listen. Yeah. You could be do very silently. That's the point. Because I years ago, the, 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 the I think even if it's uh, with binoculars or, or because you are with, with I think this is a case of Sarante Delito, no? but to, to, that's sorry, my but point. Again, to bring up a point, point of order, but just, sorry, I can like, ask a question. Um, if, uh, are you saying, um, Karina, that, for example, in the example you've given, the, the windows, are, uh, the curtains are open, and they can see what's happening clearly. In this case, they can only see what's happening clearly because they're, still, they're high up and they're looking down. If, if a police officer had, I know it's unlikely, but a police officer had been walking past and just um, on street saw it, you know? and had looked through the window without the use of any binoculars and had seen large quantities of what he believed or she believed to be cocaine in the room, would that police officer then have been justified in entering and arresting the people? Because now they're not using any uh, any kind of device, any aid to vision to see what's happening, and the cur the curtains are open. Let me focus the question more. Sorry, but we can all speculate ourselves about what our opinion of the law should be, but I don't think that there's any reason for any of us to care about that. The question, in your opinion, is would the Supreme Court? Yes. What would the Supreme Court say? Not what Andrew would say or I would oh, no, say no, no. or any of us. Would say. No. So it, it seems that the key distinction that the court drew in this was not the curtains, because they said the curtains, they said that the the evidence was inadmissible. But the problem was they, there was an enhancement to the human vision. Right. That, that, my point the level looking so that the key difference with the Supreme Court was the case where the police looked through the open curtains and saw the drugs without the knife. Mm -hmm. Or the case where the police looked through the open curtains and saw the drugs with the knife. But it's not just without the binoculars would be admissible. No problem. Yes? With binoculars, it's inadmissible. It's possible, but I, I I'm, 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 I'm not sure because it was a tent floor. Oh, no, 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 I'm sure. But I don't think it's just binoculars. Meaning, meaning, well, well, but have you if, if, yeah, I have. But, but, okay. but, 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 but meaning, if you're standing behind a tree, and so, and so you're, you're, no, no, you're hiding yourself. You're, now you're not using binoculars, but you're, but you're conducting, you know, surveillance. You're hiding yourself. The, the people in the, in the house can't see you. Would that be considered on the same level? Meaning, I'm on street level, I'm not using anything to enhance my vision, but I'm conducting surveillance because I'm making well, a conscious did, effort course, to, to, con to conceal my, my appearance. What did the courts say? Well, they didn't enter into that. So, we don't know what the courts said. But, no, but, 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 but Carolina it doesn't just base what she's talking about on one case. She's, uh, she's, uh, that's why I'm asking her the question, because she's read through several. Well, let's focus on this case first, and then we can get to one of the other possible <laughs> cases. On this case, was the key distinction the binoculars against no binoculars? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, th I think so, the binoculars. And because the so the, the Supreme Court what does what does is to 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 say, well, binoculars are similar to any technological device that have the possibility of approaching or recording images. So the treatment, legal treatment has to be the same. Yeah. But so I I and I ask so if the, the crime is a crime more serious, like a murder. The same solution, I think, is quite hard. So but I think the uh, would be logical in a logical way would be the same. I think that perhaps it would be a good thing if the legislature <coughs> speak about with the proportionality uh, principle. Perhaps would be think about uh, well depend on the, the how.
how serious the crime is, how how to work the so the but in this case, the, But in this case there was no proportionality discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. They the court made a single line. Yes. Mm -hmm. Enhancement, no enhancement. Yeah. But as you say, the, the legislature could okay. say this should be a proportionality analysis. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we have in the new regulation we have something about proportionality, but not with so many details. So that, you know, it's never too late. Right, 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 we can begin this testing. Here comes the summary on the data to review. We have seen to begin with just uh, something to frame the topic, then the technological investigation, the testing measures, and with this is the nuts and the case log. Oh, I hope you the presentation. I love and it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Put your hand up. And, uh, does anyone have any questions? No, no student has any questions. <laughs> Students are shy. Yes. Do any of the uh, oh, right. do, do, well, <laughs> do any of the professors have any questions? Would you like to ask your Carolina, please, what do you think about this new figure that is the uncover agent, this agent that can uh, play a role, a kind of role, and enter into a chat and playing the role of a young girl or something, and uh, at the same time record uh, this conversation with, with the presumed mm -hmm. Um, well, to change the trap is not a new figure. We have this figure before. <coughs> the new thing is that this figure now can it's act cool. with all, can act with all yeah. these uh, tools. Mm -hmm. So this figure is more. Uh, yeah, yeah, the fact it exists. It, yeah, but now it's, it's, it's most important, or the consequences of his investigation or her investigation could be more important or more uh, could be good for the investigation. Well, I think this is the same that I have explained before. Everything has to be transformed in a digital way, in a digital way. Everything, like the document, like the criminal proceeding. So, one part of the criminal proceeding is the speaker. So, I think it's good that this speaker can use all these new tools, because if not, the, the investigation would not be effective. The, the problem is, or the point is, that the just, so the judicial authorization has to be given only when all the legal requirements are okay. If not, it doesn't matter. No, I'm asking you the question because some authors thought that this kind of figure, for example, can push some some individual to, to commit crime. Because imagine he's in a class, he's in a chat, and uh, a, a case of, of uh, pornography or a kind of, of this type of, and he's playing with Jan. Uh, searching for young girls and so on, and then it enters a policeman, one of these, and probably the, if oh I'm a young girl and, and this can finally push or motivate or uh, to this individual finally to commit the crime, trying to uh, arrive further and and, and and take pictures of her or and, and probably. In these cases, is is the policeman who is provoking the the, the, it's the forbidden. fact? forbidden to do this. Is forbidden. It's, really it's forbidden. for it's forbidden. It's forbidden. But, but under the jurisdiction, but it, but it's under the law, it's difficult to to it's difficult. put limits. It's a matter of evidence. It's a matter of evidence. So you have to 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 prove in the, the process that you were not provoking this man or this woman. It's 
just acting like one more. But it's a matter, I think it's a matter of evidence. Yes. This is a line that the, uh, so the, the agent should not go beyond. That's clear. Mm -hmm. That's clear. That's clear. Did, uh, did you have a question? Um, well, I guess a comment on the last one. Mm -hmm. So with the entrapment case, there are many things about this that are similar in the pre-digital and the digital age. Mm -hmm. Certain entrapment is not per permitted under Spanish mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. But as you say, it's a matter of evidence. Mm -hmm. Maybe the new thing with technology is the evidence is easier yes. to find. Because if someone is entrapping through a digital, con an online chat, mm -hmm. you can get the entire history of the online chat. And the court can read all of the interactions. In contrast, in an old case yes, where a police officer meets with a defendant and they have a lot of conversation, that conversation is not all recorded. Maybe the conversation is not all recorded. But now, in a chat, mm -hmm. all of it is recorded. So maybe it's the evidence the question yeah. is different. It's not a coincidence that you see on the, on the right. history. And so the law about entrapment is the same mm -hmm. and does, does not need to change, mm -hmm. but the evidence Problem is maybe easier sometimes. Yes, it's easier. Mm -hmm. yes, it could be easier. Can I ask a question? Do you, do you, I imagine the answer is yes, but do you need judicial authorization to uh, decipher something that's encrypted? For example, if uh, they say that you live stream something and the way that you live stream it is encrypted, if the police wanted to uh, de encrypt, I think, read the word, the the, the live stream, would they need judicial permission to do that? You need the judicial authorization in order to get to access to the information. Right. The access to the information means to get the information and to read the information. Right. So you don't need a special, a special authorization. But if, if the access were public, but it's, but it, but it's encrypted, hmm. to, to be encrypted, to decipher it, you need permission. No, you don't need permission. I don't think so. You need, permission. you need the permission only in order to, but because you, you are, perhaps I, I have a problem in the question. My, my, so my, the, the information is public. Yeah. Well, no, my, my, no, the, the, public the, is, the, sig the, the signal is public. The signal is public. Meaning, meaning, meaning you can access, you can get access to the signal using standard equipment. Mm -hmm. but, I'm still bothered by the thing, thing that you're bothered with, which is the you know, this proportionality thing. I was thinking of, uh, you know, let's say something horrible. Let's say there's a, there's a pedophile in, there's someone being abused, and it's being live streamed. But the live stream is, decrypt, is, is encrypted. So the, the people in the pedophile ring can pick up what's happening, but they need special software to, to, to de-encrypt the, the message. My question is, if the police were investigating that, they can receive the message, would they need judicial permission to de-encrypt it? And, and, one, and, and, and if they didn't have it, although they might be able to intervene to stop the poor person being, being tortured, they wouldn't be able to arrest the people uh, that, that participated because that evidence wouldn't be admissible. They have to ask for the permission. To de-encrypt. To de-encrypt, de to get the information, the only way to get the information is to de-encrypt. Right. Yeah. But you're late. But I think you can't you can't think about this differently for different crimes. You have to your criminal procedure has to be the same for murder, child torture, sure. and stealing a glass of water. Sure, but, but the means so, are but the means are different. I mean, no, you, no the procedure they have to be the same. Yeah, sure, but but see, to see things over uh, over a fence with binoculars is not the same as being created a message. Or, well, that's true, but it, but that it, but the crime in question is irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, sure. You, sure, have to, sure. you have to think of your hypotheticals as the same. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, um, yeah. So, okay, you, yeah. But, but you're not going to live stream. No, we do, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the reason I chose that was because it's something you might live stream. Well, no, you might live stream them. Here's, here's how. If you no, no, if, I believe, if you I, believe you, I, I agree that it's irrelevant, the, the case. Right. I chose that hypothesis based on the kind of thing that you might right. live stream. No, but you could live stream drug dealing if you have the drug dealer here and the person yeah, with the money payments, here yeah, for, uh, and you're exchanging account. remotely yeah. right. and you want to see if it's happening. Yeah, sure, so sure, it's sure. possible. Okay. Um, the, so if I can add a... So the, the Spanish Supreme Court is struggling with this problem of techno new technology and surveillance. Mm -hmm. um, 
And as technology continues, the problems will be more and more complicated. The US Supreme Court is also struggling, of course, for the same thing, but the US Supreme Court has taken a bit of a different position. So before the digital age, the US Supreme Court said that if police can look through a window, um, through a window into a house without curtains, open curtains, and see something, then they can use that evidence in court, mm -hmm. even if they don't have judicial authorization to look. And one of the cases involved technology. The technology was a helicopter. So the window was very high up, or, or maybe it was into a part of the house, like the yard. Mm -hmm. But that you couldn't see into the yard except if you were very high up. So the Supreme Court said, the, heli the use of the helicopter is the new thing. Mm -hmm. but it's still okay for the police to look from the helicopter. But you could see, you could say that the helicopter is like binoculars. Yes, I think that is And so the Supreme, U.S. Supreme Court and the Spanish Supreme Court have taken different perspectives on it. Yes. Later, the U.S. Supreme Court had a case where, which I studied when I was a student for the moot court, and it was a drug case, and the problem be. The technology used was a heat sensor. So it's a, it, it, they take a, like a gun to a vision thing. So this looks at that wall, and it measures the temperature of the wall, how hot the wall is. If you're growing marijuana, oh. you use lights. And the lights are very hot, and they create heat on the wall. If the wall is under house, and your house has a yard, the police can't walk up and touch the wall. But they can use a, the laser to measure the temperature from outside your property. Mm -hmm. And they can measure if the house is hot or cold. So the question for the Supreme Court is, is it OK to use the gun without judicial authorization to measure the temperature of the wall? And this is worrying, because if you measure the temperature of the wall, you can also see people behind the wall. Mm -hmm. And you can see people here and here, you can see people here, and you can see people here. So this is a very big problem for privacy. But the police are outside the house, their gun is outside the house, and the heat is coming out of the house. So the Supreme Court decided that this was not OK, that you had to have a warrant to use the gun to measure the heat. Even, yeah. So you, do you need a uh, judicial warrant? Yes, yes you need it, yes. Obviously. Because they saw that this was, the technology was yeah. moving so far that it was too much. And, and, and Jamie, a further question to that, if they'd seen the heat of one of the people suddenly disappear, would that have been a flagrant crime and could they then have entered? I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering, because it's the same line. I think you'd have to ask five justices on the Supreme Court. <laughs> I think maybe not, because if the heat of one person disappears, maybe they go behind another wall. Yeah, yeah, maybe. It's not clear evidence no. of a crime in progress. I think the question is, when you try to break the, like the border of privacy, or the line of privacy, the individual put. So yes. even you try to enter using any kind of device or position or, or point of view, or, it doesn't matter. The question is, is you're breaking the, 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 the veil, or this individual yes. try to keep around. Yes, that's yeah. in, so in you, American law. That's if part you of open the, the coaches and you are uh, uh, that that question relates a lot with the right to own or privacy in general, and, and uh, it's not the same when the a badge is, for example. Oh, and take a picture of a uh, uh, one of these uh, yes. famous people, and he, they are in the window, and they are in this moment they are showing. They yes. themselves, because everyone can. It's not the same as if you rent a helicopter and go in order to film the the image or to take a picture using it, or when they rent a helicopter to go uh, and follow a ship, for example, in the in the because they are breaking this line or this space of privacy. They try to protect. Well, yes and no. You can analyze, I think you're right about the expectation of privacy. And for yeah. in, in American law, the whether you think you have privacy is very important. Yeah. 
right. and, and the but do you ordinary think... means you keep to maintain this privacy. Yes, but is is it ordinary for there to be helicopters and binoculars? Maybe yes. You can say yes or no. E I think either yeah. answer is depends where you are. Maybe it depends where you are. Where you are. If you're and also if you're a celebrity. If you're a celebrity, should you expect that there are helicopters over your property? Maybe no. If it's, but yeah. but realistically, if you're a celebrity, there are helicopters over your yeah. See, So you could, if you're a court, you can say yes or no to this question. But the, I think the heat gun, right now, no. But maybe in the future, everybody knows there are heat guns. Mm -hmm. Does the answer change, or does the answer stay the same? So, I think it's a very difficult mm -hmm. question. But it's very interesting that the Spanish Supreme Court and the American Supreme Court decided differently about ordinary old technology like helicopters and binoculars. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? The students are being very quiet. Uh, that, that's a good sign that you're overwhelmed by the brilliance of the people speaking, or it's not <laughs> such a good sign, and uh, you want to go and have lunch. No more questions? Any more questions from the professors? We, we can speak about um, uh, a new kind of privacy, in your opinion, from the, um, the people who say are uh, digital makers. They have a, a part of his uh, a part of their lives is in a in a lab in a lab. We have we, we can speak about another kind of level of privacy um, from this or revolution. What do you think about? Because I'm supposed that it distends the lines of what we can. Use as a privacy concept. Have been always, no? uh, we have been always the possibility for the holders of the right of extend their privacy more or less. You have the possibility, and it's clear, I think it's clear that. Uh, but the technology didn't create another space of privacy. Another space? Well, I think that you, you have. I think a, a virtual life, a, a kind of virtual privacy. Yes, a digital life, a digital life that you can uh, follow when the uh, social networks and so on, yeah. yes. But so, you have to, to, to go case, every case, every case, every concrete case, and the determinate case, you can see if there has been a big breach of the privacy or not. Because there are people that are digital natives that they doesn't uh, put anything on the internet. Yeah. And others, they do. I think it's normally digital it's immigrants that don't put stuff on the internet. I think the digital natives are but the not so careful. <laughs> <laughs> Establish the limits. That's the problem. Well, okay. Well, thank you very much for attending. Thank you, for, of course, to Dr. Karina sanchez Crespo for the wonderful presentation. Thank you for the members of the audience that have participated by asking such interesting questions. And. Uh, I'll just ask, have you all signed the attendance list? Do you have it there? Could you please bring that to me? And thank you very much. <laughs>